as an animator, it's always necessary to have the best tool to help you finish your project with ease. Especially since animation is a very long and arduous process, you would need the best tools to help you make the process a bit easier. For this reason, we thought it might be helpful to compare Adobe Animate and Clip Studio Paint to see which software is most suitable for your animation purposes. With that out of the way, let's jump into comparing them. If you're interested in learning how to use Adobe Animate, we recommend you try Domestica. It's one of the best e-learning platforms that offer dozens of classes tailored exclusively for the creative community all around the world. There's a plethora of design categories that can align with your interests, and you can dive into them with the assistance of highly experienced instructors and passionate students like you and me. For example, I've taken this class about hand-drawn digital illustrations brought to life by Yukai Do. Honestly, no wonder it was awesome. I mean, the instructor worked for huge names like Spotify, MTV, and even Apple. The content of the course is rich and well-paced. First, you'll start by performing research and development by compiling references, preparing your mood board, and creating your color palette to build upon. The next thing will be taking your first steps with Photoshop. You'll use it to prepare assets like thumbnails, stylized frames, and storyboards. After that, it's time for the fun part. You'll actively use Adobe Animate and After Effects to bring your illustrations to life. And finally, you'll wrap it up by rendering and sharing your work. Our audience here at Inspiration.2D can benefit from 10% off at checkout using our promo code. If you're interested in this offer, you can find all the necessary links in the description box below. In this overview, we will take a general look at the two software to get to know them a bit more. Let's first of all start with Adobe Animate. Adobe Animate is developed by Adobe Inc. The software was first released in 1996, but still thrives today with very frequent updates, with the latest, as of the writing of this script, being released 25 days ago. Adobe Animate, put in the simplest ways possible, is an animation software. It's used to create vector graphics and animate them for different purposes, from TV shows to game development. Remember those Flash games we played back in the day on our browser? Those were made by Adobe Animate, which was formerly known as Adobe Flash, among many other names. The software isn't limited to vector graphics, it also supports raster graphics. As the name denotes, the software is tailor-made for animation purposes. It's available on Windows and Mac OS. Now that we know a bit about Adobe Animate, let's take a look at Clip Studio Paint. Clip Studio Paint is a 2D graphics editing software developed by a Japanese graphics software company under the name of Celsius. Initially released in 2001, with the latest update being, as of the time of writing this script, 19 days ago. Unlike Adobe Animate, Clip Studio Paint isn't only made for 2D animation, but rather for making comics and 2D illustration first and foremost. The software comes on desktop to Mac OS and Windows, but also as an application to iPad OS, iOS, Android, and Chrome OS. Awesome sauce. Okay, now, let's see how these software present themselves to the user. Starting with Animate, you have a regular menu bar on the very top of the software. On the left, you have all of your tools in the toolbar, whether for drawing, selecting, making shapes, etc, etc. And then, on the right-hand side of the software, you have your properties panel, and it is exactly as the name denotes, a place where you can configure the properties, or say options, of a particular tool you are using at the moment. On that same side, if you switch from the properties tab to the library tab, you'll be met with the place where all of your assets are for the animation. For example, sketches or any other asset that you'll use in your animation process. At the center stage of the software is, well, the stage. That was a really good joke. No one can convince me otherwise. 
No, but seriously, the canvas in Adobe Animate is called the stage. On the bottom, you have your timeline just as any other animation software, with frames and keyframes, obviously, and layers. All in all, Adobe Animate is a mix of a regular 2D animation software with Adobe's Creative Cloud's feel to it. Meaning, it looks like any other Adobe software, and that's a big advantage if you're coming from using those, as it will probably be extremely intuitive and easy to use for you. Moving on to Clip Studio Paint, it's one big hefty software. For that reason, we will only focus on its animation workspace, as it's the one that is most relevant to this video. Let it be known that the interface for Clip Studio Paint is entirely customizable, but most commonly, it has the timeline on the bottom and you would activate it by going to the menu bar at the top. Otherwise, the rest remains unchanged from the user interface of the software. Generally, the toolbar on the left with brush options, the layers on the right and canvas in the middle. Does that remind you of something? Well, yeah. Adobe Animate and literally every other animation software. Clip Studio Paint may have other dockers added, which gives it a cluttered look in comparison to Adobe Animate. Think of it like this. You have your Clip Studio Paint with a timeline slapped on it on the bottom. Unlike Adobe Animate, Clip Studio Paint is less seamless in its presentation. So, Adobe Animate is less likely to intimidate you, as opposed to Clip Studio Paint, unless you are already familiar with it, which is the common advice. Before trying to animate in Clip Studio Paint, it's advisable to know at least a bit about the software's basics. Now that we know how the two software are visually, let's take a look at their tools and what these tools allow us to do. In a general way, Adobe is more of the software that you would use for a variety of projects, whether movies, commercials, or even video games. And that leans into motion graphics and vector animation, rather than a frame-by-frame -frame animation. We're not saying that the software can't do it, but it's more used in animations with more of a digital look and less of a traditional feel to them. The software has many incredible tools to help make the process of animation easier by using technology. On top of all the basic tools any 2D software has, such as pressure-sensitive pen and brush tools, color selectors, shape tools, and selection tools, the software also has many great animation-specific tools, like the bone tool that helps you rig your characters. You can also compose in the software and use the camera tool to help you build your scene as well as do tweening and much more. With the tools the software provides, you can make automated lip syncing and even animate on top of a video. All of these tools come in super handy, especially since the software is mainly made to animate characters. Animate also provides you with a library of ready-to-use assets in your project if you find it difficult to draw and integrate them in your animation. In addition, it allows for audio and video embedding, Clip Studio Paint is more on the traditional side of animation. In that sense, it's a lot more rudimentary than Adobe Animate. For example, there isn't a bone tool that allows you to do rigging, but you can still rig by using folders. The software has onion skinning and light table features for a better traditional animation feel. It also allows you to add audio tracks and export your animation as a video, image sequence, or an animated GIF. It's worth noting that the animation properties can differ depending on the version of the software you use. If you're using the Pro or W version, you can only use up to 24 frames as opposed to the Limitless X version. Another tool that you can use in the software is the 3D character tool as a reference for your 2D character animation. So instead of taking a video reference of some kind of movement or looking forever for the perfect video that reflects the movement you want, you can easily use the 3D character tool. Clip Studio Paint is the software you would go for to do frame by frame traditional looking animation. For both software, there is quite a learning curve, though it all depends. 
if you come from using a lot of Adobe's tools, Adobe Animate can be easy for you to use, and especially since the software is tailor-made for animation and has a more simplistic user interface. On top of all of this, since most Adobe products are the industry standard, you see more people wanting to learn them. And that demand translates to more tutorials found on YouTube. That doesn't mean that Clip Studio doesn't have tutorials on it on YouTube. On the contrary, there are many. However, Clip Studio is created mainly for illustration and comics, so you can find a variety of other tools that aren't relevant to animation that might make the process of learning to use it a lot more frustrating. Now, time has come for us to tell you which one is best. As usual, it all depends on where you're coming from and what you want. Let's say you have some kind of background or experience with Adobe software and want to animate things. The obvious choice for you would be Adobe Animate, as the software is going to be very familiar for you thanks to your previous experiences. But maybe you're mainly a 2D artist and want to animate on a smaller scale. Clip Studio is perfect for you, as it has all the 2D illustration and comic options, plus a nice little animation option to help you start your journey in animating. Maybe you're a professional animator and want reliable software, as Adobe Animate is the industry standard, and the fact that it's made strictly for animation with its many, many animation tools, it will prove to be a very good choice for you. We hope our comparison of the two software has given you a good idea on them and it helped you make a decision. Make sure to visit our channel for more software comparisons like these. With that said, comment below if you think that we've missed something or if you have any other suggestions. Thank you for watching as always and see you next time.